right now we start our morning inside brunch in thanking you for being here we go over to jamaica we go across to the senior producer of Nationwide Radio in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, he is the senior producer for the program Nationwide at 5. His name is Mr. Cecil Toms. Uh, Mr. Toms, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you, Mr. Bishop. How are you? And the people of Trinidad and Tobago, how are you? We are all the better for having you here. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. The reason we are here together is because of the impasse between Trinidad and Tobago, at least the perception that there is discrimination against Jamaica nationals. Uh, your Prime Minister invited our Prime Minister to come to Jamaica, look at the situation, and have a discussion on it. Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister, the Honorable Keith Rowley, accepted that invitation, as a matter of fact, from your Honorable Andrew Harness on his visit to to Jamaica, there were two um, things there. The primary one was to deal with the boycott of Trinidad and Tobago products, and the other one was to address the question of the trade imbalance. Let us start with the um, the, uh, the the first part of his purpose, which I think was the biggest one, most folks would say, which is convincing the Jamaican people that Trinidad and Tobago is a warm and welcoming country for them. Did he achieve that? <laughs> Well, well, like I said, thank you so much again, Mr. Bishop, for having me. And, and before I, I go into the, the, the discussion, may I just extend condolences to the, the Manning family yes. and, of course, the people of Trinidad who, who lost your former Prime Minister, Patrick Manning, recently. I think that the visit of Dr. Rowley has helped significantly to uh, address frost relations between the two countries, as you know, we have been in a, in a kind of tug of war of sorts, not only with the trade-related issues, but with the maltreatment, as, as we call it, of Jamaicans entering mm -hmm. the Trinidad and Republic. I, I believe that the fact that Dr. Rowley came to Jamaica significantly helped to, to avert any potential crisis mm. that may have been uh, originating in the minds of both Trinidad and Jamaicans at large. As, as you know, there have been many complaints from all citizens concerning uh, their treatment when it is that they enter the Piaco International Airport. Your Prime Minister have made, has made uh, a pledge I believe one of which is the establishment of a facility at the Piaco Airport, uh, indicating that that facility will be completed, I think, within this month or, mm -hmm. or perhaps next month, mm -hmm. and for the treatment of Jamaicans to be to be better. So we, we await that. Yeah. Glenn Thompson, senior producer of Nationwide Radio in Kingston, Jamaica, is my guest. The Prime Minister, as you said, he admitted to better detention facilities and courtesies needed to be extended to those visiting our country, particularly those who are denied entry. But he made a very interesting call. He said that CARICOM leaders essentially failed to inform their citizenry that freedom of movement in the region is not unbridled, and it is subject to each country's immigration laws, which include each visitor's ability to financially sustain themselves while in Trinidad and Tobago. Would you say this message got down to the citizenry in Jamaica? You know, it's all about public education, Mr. Bishop. Uh, one of the problems that I, I find is how we communicate our, our messages. Um, following on the Shanif Myri uh, uh, case, for example, one would have thought that relations between the two countries would have been much improved and that there would be no need for either leaders of their respective government, in the case of Dr. Rowley and uh, Prime Minister Andrew Holness, mm -hmm. having to intervene in an issue such as this one because there would have been precedent given the Shanique Myri uh, issue. Now, um, I, I would say that the onus is on all the governments in CARICOM to ensure that there is a greater understanding of the rules governing the, the issue of movement in the region. I know as it is now that we are seeking to establish a character the single market and economy, and we have been only able to achieve that in a very limited extent, mm -hmm. or to a limited extent, simply because there are only few uh, categories of persons who are able to travel in the region, and that would include, of course, persons within the entertainment fraternity, some of our, our, our athletes, sporting athletes, etc. And I think that that, that, that that grouping needs to be expanded, but it also requires a greater level of public education yes. on the part of respective governments to ensure that all citizens understand that when you are traveling to 
any region within the country. It, it is not a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. And that is very important. Uh, Cecil Toms is my guess. The fact that over 13,000 TNT nationals traveled to Jamaica in 2015 and over 15,000 Jamaicans uh, traveled to Trinidad and Tobago, your prime minister clearly said, indicates our nationals uh, have and our nations have accepted the vision of those before us who created the architecture for what is now a CARICOM. There was a, a, an interesting side point of this. Um, when I introduced, I said there were two issues there. One was the question of, of travel and the boycott, which was the one of the purposes for the Prime Minister going there. Before I get to the second one, yes. let me just ask you, is there any sign that uh, there is satisfaction sufficient that one can now say the boycott is over? I, I would say that because the originator, or at least the call for the boycott, was made by our president of the private sector organization, William of Food. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he had, he's one of the critical stakeholders here. He, he met with your Prime Minister, Dr. Rowley, and I, I believe that they were able to engage each other. Um, having been in the newsroom, I've not heard and contacted him. I've not heard since him making any repeated calls for boycott. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I would say that uh, him having meeting Dr. Rowley and, and, and talking about the issues, I believe that he is now satisfied that that they are now at a place where dialogue must continue. And to that end, I believe that our prime minister, or is it your prime minister? Your prime minister has in fact inv invited uh, Prime Minister Holness to to come to Trinidad for further discussions on on on, on creating a better path. Or for the two largest economies in the region to 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 discuss this matter, and of course to have a a resolution that that benefits all all parties. It is the power of social media, I think, that has a lot to do with the boycott. We saw Mr. Mahfoud, as you mentioned, president of the private sector organization uh, of Jamaica. Um, many felt that he used this opportunity. He used the opportunity of the detainees to whip up support uh, for this uh, trade imbalance, which was his issue. And many folks just took it in the area of the ill treatment. That is one of the reasons I'm happy that you clarified that the fever for the boycott seemed to have abated somewhat because I felt folks were carrying on a battle that they did not understand, as I suspected, and some commentators have opined, Mr. Mahfoud had his own agenda vis-a-vis -vis the whole question of the trade imbalance. Well, you know, Mr. Bishop, uh, it's interesting how you phrase that, because just like manufacturers in Trinidad, all local manufacturers uh, mm -hmm. have legitimate concerns about products not being able mm -hmm. to reach the shelves of Trinidad and Tobago, and it is that which, which Mr. Mahfoud and others here have had significant concerns about for years. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I hope having uh, had your Prime Minister come here and discussing the issues and having made certain commitments that those matters will be addressed. It really doesn't make sense for the two largest markets in the region yes. to be in this, in this kind of war. I, I think it, their, their time and their efforts would be better served if it is that we are able to better engage each other and mm -hmm. to have deeper relations with each other in, in, with respect to the issue of tourism, with res respect to trade, with respect to manufacturing. And so th 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 this particular issue, which has been ongoing for so long, needs to be dealt with. Leadership is now at play, and I hope that, 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 that there will be some kind of favor of a re resolution. I believe there is some kind of favor of a resolution now, because the parties have sat and, and have agreed at certain things, and I, I just hope that it, they will be able to execute it. Uh, yes? Uh, uh, yes. My the, take mm -hmm. on the visit is that it is a wonderful visit. The proof of the pudding will be in its eating, and that will come. Uh, in several weeks or several months' time. Cecil Tom, senior producer of Nationwide Radio in Jamaica. Uh, the program is Nationwide at 5. Happy to have you here. My query a moment ago was not uh, an indictment of Mr. Mahfoud's intention. It was merely to say that when he used the detention issue as, a, 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 as something to address the trade, I thought he was conflating two separate issues, albeit legitimate issues. I thought there was a conflation there that confused a whole lot of people. But you clarified it, and for oh. that, uh, for that yeah. I am thankful. I think both um, it, this, the question of the trade imbalance is something that will be discussed. The, our Prime Minister has said that. Your Prime Minister understands that. And, and, and I think the region more and more 
uh, getting to a clearer understanding of what you articulated a moment ago. The two largest markets in the region cannot be successful individually. That is something that we have found out a long time ago, as Britain will very shortly find out when she tries to work <laughs> away from the, <laughs> from the European <laughs> Union. We are going to hope that we have learned our lesson. Man, it's really good talking to you this morning, and thank you so much for the clarity. Well, thank you so much for having me, Randy Bishop. Hope to speak with you again soon. And I hope we do that very often. Uh, thank you so much, Cecil Toms. You have yourself a very wonderful Sunday, sir. And the best to you and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And I thank you very much. It's 13 minutes after 10 o'clock. You are inside brunch. We head across to the United States, heading specifically to Washington, D.C., when we return inside brunch.